Welcome back for another Triumphant Kids Corner. Good morning, how are you doing today? All right, we are here for another Sunday School lesson. Today is actually our final lesson of our 2020 spring session, and then next week we'll be starting our summer session. But before we dive right in, don't forget to like, subscribe, so click the thumbs up, click the bell so you'll be notified every time we upload a video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Facebook at thetriumphantchurch.com not dot com at the triumphant church of god and let's dive right into our first lesson so my two to five year olds your story title is peter told cornelius about jesus and this is what your activity sheet looks like my first to third graders you have paul taught peter and this is what your activity sheet looks like my fourth to sixth graders you have the same title and this is what your activity sheet would look like all right, as we all know the plans, grab your stories, but grab your stuff because it's time for story time. So please sit back, relax, enjoy the story. Parents, don't hesitate to ask questions. Children, don't hesitate to ask, ask questions as well. All righty, see you after story time. Cornelius and his family loved God. One day, Cornelius was praying and an angel gave him a message from God. The angel told Cornelius to find a man named Peter. Cornelius sent some men to find Peter. When the men found Peter, they explained what the angel had told Cornelius. The men said, Cornelius wants to hear what you have to say. The next day, Peter and the men went to Cornelius' house. Cornelius was there, waiting with his family and friends. Peter began talking to them. God wants me to tell you that he loves everyone, Peter said. God wants me to tell you about Jesus. Peter said that Jesus was God's son. Peter told that Jesus taught people about God. Peter told about the good things Jesus did, like making sick people well. Cornelius, his family, and friends listened to Peter. They believed everything Peter told them about Jesus. And they loved Jesus, too. Paul taught Peter. Paul wrote to the Galatians about going to Jerusalem with Barnabas and Titus. He went quietly to talk with the leaders James, Peter, and John. When they heard he was sent to preach the gospel to the Gentiles, those who were not Jews, they welcomed Paul and Barnabas. They all agreed Paul should go and preach to the Gentiles. In Antioch, Paul heard that Peter, sometimes called Cephas, often spoke to the Gentiles and ate meals with them, at least for a while. But when other believing Jews came to Antioch, Peter stopped spending time with the Gentiles and eating with them. Others saw what Peter did and they too withdrew from the Gentiles. Even Barnabas changed what he was doing. Paul knew that this was not right. He was so disappointed with Peter and he scolded Peter in front of everyone. Sometimes you are comfortable with Gentiles living like they do. And yet at other times you expect them to change who, who they are and follow Jewish rules. Paul reminded Peter that no one is saved except by faith in Jesus. Paul told Peter that he did not have to worry about following old ways of doing things. Following rules does not save people. Faith in Jesus does. God offers new life in Christ to all believers. Welcome back from story time. I hope you guys enjoyed your stories and let's dive right into our first craft. Now we all know what we've been doing. We've been adding our stamps and traveling with Paul to various cities to minister and to spread the word of God. So this week, our two to five year olds, their story was about Peter talking to Cornelius. So here's a picture of Peter talking to Cornelius and his family. So that's our first destination. And then our second story, which was our first to sixth graders, this is where Paul talked to Peter and he kind of gave him a good scolding. So this is ours and I finally colored it guys. Hey, hey. so all we're gonna do, 
get your passports. I hope you didn't lose it. We have our final week. We're just going to double up right here. We're going to put two cities, two stamps. And I hope you have your stamps. And if you do not have any of these materials, uh, our coloring sheets are, will be in the description box down below. But our stamps and our passport, you have to go back two videos and you'll see in that description box all the links to the all these resources. So let's get our glue, our scissors, our tape, and a marker, and let's get started. Alrighty, so we've added our maps and guess what? I actually colored every picture up here and added some more details to the map. I added my water waves, some rocks. In this corner, you can't really see. There's a whale, but you don't need to see that. It's a little, you know, I'm not an artist, so it's okay. Um, so we're gonna move our boat and we're gonna go put it, we're gonna put it right in between here. Um, Peter, he's not really fully on the map because this is Paul's journey. But it's okay. So he's hanging on the wayside. So it's all right. But this is Paul and Antioch talking to Peter. And this is Peter talking to Cornelius. And we have our passports all full and finished. If we need to make another one for our new session, we will make another one. But this is it for our first craft. Thank you, guys. Now it's time for our second activity. So this one is going to be different. We are going to do an object lesson. And it's going to be on equality. So before we go into equality, we're going to talk about what we have here. This is my impromptu scale. What you're going to need is a plastic hanger, some string, I, can, I found twine, and you could use a cup or a bucket, but we have plates. So because we have a wider um, item, I guess you could call, we had to use like we had punched four holes into each side of the plate and we strung it through about two long strings strung it through the holes and looped it around the hook of the hanger and secured it at the bottom of the plates okay and just try to get it as even as possible if you want to do this with them you can if you don't you just want to you know watch the video and discuss the lesson that's all right too you don't have to do the work but you're also going to need <laughs> crayons or different objects of different sizes and that is it for making the scale now we're going to talk about equality what is equality can anyone tell me or can you tell your parents what do you think what equality is i'll give you guys a minute can i have some jeopardy music i need a little louder all right okay do you guys have it yet all right so equality is it means in the dictionary um, definition is to be equal and yeah to define a word with a word it doesn't really help so let me give you some more all right so equality doesn't mean that we will all that we all look the same or we have the same weight right it doesn't mean that we have the same height all the time but equality means that we all no matter how different we are have the same right the right to be treated the right or the right to be treated equally or the rights um, to be loved, the right to be respected, the right to be cared for. And um, no matter how different we are, we have different types of people in the world and mommy and daddy can go or grandma, whoever's the adult in the home can go into more detail of the different types of people in the world. But we all, there are different ethnicities, different types in the world that no matter how different we are, we can all be equal. And just to use the scale and to give you a better de um, demonstration, we're gonna dive into the two, st the two stories that we heard in story time today, but I'm gonna add one little story in. It's about the Samaritan woman at the well. Now, in that town, in her time, Jewish people thought they were better than the Samaritans. They believed that they worshiped better. 
Oh, well, they believed that their God was better, possibly, yeah. Um, they ate better. They had better rules. They just thought they were way better. And who can tell me what's happening as I keep adding the crayons? Uh, this side is getting a little heavy. So this plate will represent the Jewish people. They thought they were higher. They thought they were better than the Samaritans. All right? So that's a better way to explain equality or what it means to not be equal. The Jewish people thought they were better than the Samaritans. So, but this is something. When Jesus met the woman at the well, knowing that she wasn't Jewish, there's something that he wanted her to know. And this is something that he wants all of us to know. That when he comes to this, when he came to this earth, he came for everybody to love everybody. The same amount of grace for everyone. The same amount of care for everybody. Everyone will have a relationship with him. And whatever else, but everyone will have an equal share. So let's try make our scale. It's a little wonky, guys. I'm sorry. But the same amount of crayons, same amount of love. This is what Jesus wants. This is what Jesus teaches us. That all of us are made the same or all of us are equal in the sense that we have the same amount of love. We should receive the same amount of love and give the same amount of love to our neighbor. And we receive that love from God. All right, guys. So this is what Jesus wants. And sometimes we have people in the world that think that they are better. So let's talk about the stories. For our two to five year olds, we talked about Peter and Cornelius. Now, nothing crazy was going on there. Peter, who was a Jew, he's a disciple of God, or of Christ, Jesus. He was a disciple of Jesus. He went and spoke with Cornelius. Now, Cornelius was not a Jewish man. He was a Roman citizen. But they both believed in God. They both believed that Jesus died on the cross for them. They both had faith in Jesus or faith in God. So you have two types of people in that story. A Jewish man, which is Peter, and a Roman citizen. Now, my first to sixth graders, you kind of got a juicier story here. Uh, we know Paul. Paul had to openly, blatantly scold Peter in front of everybody. Now, let's take it back to when we were in elementary school. When I was in elementary school, let me just take it back. Uh, probably showing my age a bit. But if my mom ever embarrassed me or scolded me in front of my friends, if I could get red in the face, I would. That's embarrassing. Nobody likes that. So you have a grown adults, Paul scolding Peter. Does anybody know why? Peter was acting different around the Gentiles. There was one moment he was friends with them, fellowshipping with them, eating with them. And then when Jewish people came into town, he shifted, he changed. He distanced himself from them. All because he kind of felt that the Jewish people had their own laws and that the Gentiles are not living up to that standard standard or that law that the Jewish people have. Now, what is, what is a law? Different rules that the Jewish people lived by before Jesus came and died. They had a certain way of eating things, a certain way of preparing their food. They all had to be circumcised. That's just something that you do to the body. And mommy and daddy could go further into details if they want to about circumcision. I'm not going there. Um, they all had to be circumcised and they all had to eat certain things at a certain time and they worshiped different. They didn't have idols, but they had a priest that they made sacrifices with animal sacrifices and their, their prayers and they worship, but they communicated through the priest. But when Jesus came, we no longer needed that. They no longer had to do the old way of things, but Peter was still kind of in the old way of thinking. So Paul had to scold him and tell him, no, Jesus came for all of us. Everyone has access. Everyone has the opportunity. I think I put too much crayons. <laughs> Everyone has the access and the opportunity to having a relationship with Jesus. Paul had to tell him this is for everyone. That you're not going to act different when the Jewish people come into town. If you're hanging with the Gentiles, hang with the Gentiles. 
So who is a Gentile? I forgot to mention that. I would be considered a Gentile. I'm someone who's not born Jewish, so I would be considered a Gentile. Anyone who is not born Jewish would be considered Gentile. But Jesus came so he can spread his love for the Jews, the Jamaicans, the Hispanics, the Latinos, the Puerto Ricans, all in that same group, um, Europeans, everyone can have and experience the love of Christ. That's why Jesus came and that's what Paul had to remind Peter. And this is our object lesson on equality. And especially what's been going on this week, it's best no matter how young our children are, they're, le they're young enough to learn how to see a skin tone and, and to, sh to f learn hatred. They're young enough to learn love. So let's start it from this age. Let's start it from now. If you want to dive in deeper with this lesson on equality, please do so. But thank you for joining us and I hope it helped. So thank you again for joining us. And we're going to end off with something different. We're going to end off with prayer. All right, guys. So I need everyone to close your eyes wherever you are. Eyes closed and our heads bowed. Just how we do it in children's church. We are reverencing the Lord by closing our eyes while we pray. All right, Lord, I thank you for your love. I thank you for teaching us your love and for showing us your love, even though sometimes it may be hard to see in the world that we're living in and the climate that we're living in right now, God. But I pray, God, that these lessons, oh God, these activities, the crafts, it would drop, it would drop a seed into our children's hearts and into their minds, oh God, and that the families surrounding them will help nurture it and let it grow. Oh God, that they will grow understanding your love, oh God, not doctrine, not religion, not rules or anything, but God, they will understand your word. Lord God, that it will be hidden in their heart and they're not too young, oh God, to have their word in your heart, oh God, that it would be in their ears, oh God, and that they would run, oh God, run it, run with it, oh God, have your way, oh God, cover each triumphant kid, cover each family that is watching. Cover each person that is watching right now, oh God. Let your peace reign, oh God. And let us just learn, oh God, to love each other, oh Lord. Have thine own way. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to thank you again for joining us. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Facebook at The Triumphant Church of God. You can also follow us on Instagram at triumphant.youth. I got it right this time. Triumphant.youth. Please like, subscribe, share, follow, pass this on, even if it's just a snippet that you want them to watch, but just share this, share the message. And thank you again. Till next week. Peace out.